Hi! On the wood picker today, as you can see, now I can start the lights of the shop from anywhere in the house. In my shop, I have 18 fixtures like these ones to make sure there aren't any shadows when I'm working. I turn them on with those three switches. Ah, for a while now, this piece of furniture has blocked the switches. I'm going to do something with it soon. At least, I hope so. I don't know if you remember that I can turn on some outlets in my shop with this app that I made. I want to build on this area, so I draw a plan which will use a Wi-Fi module in place of an RF one. From this plan, I make a PCB. Here it is. This will be perfect. I will use this module, which costs a little bit more than a dollar, as my microcontroller. This is part of the hundred lines of code that I had to write to make this work. Now I have to solder all the parts on the PCB. At least, this doesn't hurt my elbow. The first one is done. I just need to test it. Since it's working fine, the next step is to make a box for it. So I draw one in Aspire. In fact, I have two boxes here. All that's left to do is to cut them with the laser. This takes a lot of time. Each box takes 45 minutes, so it's an hour and a half for both boxes. Eventually, it's done, and I can glue them. All the boxes are glued with instant glue. This is the main box, but I also have to glue the lid. Ah, but even if the box is ready, I still have to take care of the electric part of this. When the connections are done, it's possible to put everything inside the box. On my design, I also had the screw holes ready. Now I can test my first one. Success! I'm really eager to see all of them at work. But I'm missing some connectors. I don't have enough for the 22 boxes I want to make. So I'm going to do the most important ones first while I'm expecting the connectors to be delivered. I made two bigger boxes so they can accommodate a 60 amp relay. You can see it better here. I'm going to use those modules to replace this one. In fact, this is a 110 volt RF module that activates a relay that powers my 220 volt dust collector. But now, I don't need it anymore. Everything is done in this box. While waiting for my connectors, I was able to finish all the boxes and the PCBs. At least, all that I was able to solder. I'm still missing connectors. All those modules will have a simple web page, so I can turn them on individually or all of them in one go. But uh, I think having a dedicated box to do this would be nice. So I draw another plan and another PCB. Uh, usually people who use these microcontrollers use this kind of module because it's convenient. Everything is on that small PCB. But uh, it's way too big for what I want to do. So I'm going to only use the main module and not all the rest. It's installed right here on my PCB. I also need a box, and for this, I go back to Aspire. I draw all the parts that I will need for my box on several sheets. The outside, the front and back, plus all the buttons. Now, it's time to cut this. The outside of the box is cut out of a reclaimed piece of birch. When the end mill cut is done, I install a quarter round bit and round over the edge. 
after removing the board, I can put the aligning pins in place, screw the board back, and make the roundover on the other side. Then I put back the end mill and finish all the remaining cuts. When the CNC is done, there are still things to do. The PCB will go here, but uh, I need to be able to charge the battery. With this all, I will be able to do it. But uh, I'm still missing the top and bottom. But uh, that's not all. There are still the buttons to make. They're cut from a piece of walnut. The first cut is done with a quarter round bit. Then I switch the bit and finish the buttons. I need to glue two spacers between the holes. For this, I use instant glue again. The pieces are held in place on the PCB with blue tape. When the PCB is in place, the spacers are glued. Now I need to check if this will work. But uh, I can see that the holes are a bit too small. Now with instant glue again, I can glue the front in place. I also need spacers on the back to apply pressure on the PCB. Now I can drill the holes for the back. With the holes done, it's possible to assemble the remote. Here, it's all completed. As you can see, several buttons are programmed. In fact, uh, like for all my modules, I made a simple web page that has all the same virtual buttons, but on the settings page, I can reprogram every physical one of them. Eventually, I receive my connectors. This means that I'm able to finish the assembly. This is quite repetitive and also not very fast. But in the end, I managed to assemble all 20 modules. All I need to do is bring the ladder inside the shop and put them in place. Now I can try this for the first time. This is exactly what I was aiming for. It works perfectly. But I wanted even more. So I bought this programmable watch to control my modules at the end of my wrist. On the main display, I can start or stop four of the things that I use the most. The lights, the radio, and both vacuums. I also have more screens where I can control each outlet individually. So now I have three different ways to control the outlets in my shop. Which one do you think is the coolest? Needless to say, what took the most time to do was all this programming. If this interests you, all the sources are on my website. Maybe a project like this is not for you. But I also might light the flame on some of you to jump into this kind of creation. But one thing I can say is that this was easy on my elbow. And see you soon for another episode of The Woodpecker.